What separates good technology from great technology? Is it money? Creativity? No. I would argue that it's vision. Vision and a determination to pursue your dreams regardless of what stands in your way. It's because of vision that there are so many incredible innovations that we see and use today, and it's because of dreams that many more are being created at a near exponential rate. In the past, we've seen a clear divide between the conceptual designer with a vision and the skilled engineers who actually build it. But now, we're seeing engineers work alongside designers, sharing equal input in highly complex projects. And through new enterprising formats like crowdfunding, we're starting to see and support individual makers conceptualizing products, gaining global demand that we would have normally never heard about. Take the Pebble smartwatch, for example. It started as an idea from a Waterloo graduate. It then went on to become Kickstarter's most successful campaign, twice over, raising over $10 million in just one single short day. And now, you can find them at just about every major retailer. So today, I want to show you how people like us here in this room today, from all walks of life and fields of study, can have a meaningful influence on advancing technology as a whole. But first, I want to share with you the story of Steve Mann. Now, Steve is widely known as the father of wearable computers, and that's because he pioneered the field back in the 1980s at MIT. As you can see, back then the tech was big, bulky, and oftentimes dangerous. And yes, people did call him crazy back in the 80s for wearing this kind of stuff. They just didn't see the point. But Steve had a vision. He had a vision to improve human eyesight with digital glasses, and he persevered. And through that perseverance, he founded a new industry. Now, with over 300 companies, 22 million devices shipped, and a market value of $11 billion, we're without a doubt entering the breakout period for wearable tech. In the past year alone, we've seen the breakout of wearable smartwatches, fitness trackers, brain reading headbands, and head mounted displays, just to name a few, all with the purpose of connecting us and changing the way we interact with technology and the world around us. But let's take a closer look at what this growing industry really means for you and I as creatives. Have we finally reached the point where science fiction is meeting reality? And are crazy ideas only crazy without a little bit of funding in the right mind? Well, we're already starting to see large tech companies hiring science fiction authors to help model potential future opportunities. For example, noted science fiction author Neil Stevenson is now working as the chief futurist at a company called Magic Leap. Now, Magic Leap is one of the most intriguing new tech companies. They claim to make a head-mounted display that leads to the experience of magic, which is rather intriguing considering the fact that this company has yet to share publicly any of their mysterious innovations. And that would seem pretty wishy-washy if it weren't for the fact that companies like Google have given them billions. So I think it's safe to say that at this point in time, science fiction has not quite yet become science fact. But we're without a doubt entering this really exciting period now where the two worlds are starting to come together in ways never before imagined. Technology today has finally become ubiquitous enough that individuals armed only with an idea and minimal understanding of the underpinning science that drives the technology are now becoming vital throughout the development process. And that, to me, is truly inspiring. In the past year alone, 66% of all wearables released are priced under $300. Today, you can't walk into Best Buy without bumping into one or bumping into someone wearing one. And the reason for this growth is mainly because wearables are actually not a new industry. Pioneers like Steve Mann have been working in the industry for the past 30 years, bringing his ideas into consumer products. Today, Steve runs U of T's ITAP lab. There, we work on improving human eyesight through digital eyeglasses and augmented reality. When I first walked into Steve's lab, I remember a seeing a team of his engineers huddled over their toys, but I was the one that felt like the child, walking into his father's workshop for the first time. I didn't know why this was there, why that was there, but what I did know was that I wanted to learn. And through this curiosity and drive to learn, I was able to ask the fundamental question of, why is this like this, but not like that? 
The whole lab that Steve runs is filled with highly passionate people, always willing to help newcomers like myself learn all the skills necessary to take on projects. Now you might be wondering, in the vast field of wearable tech, why have I chosen to work on head-mounted displays? Well, it's pretty simple. The truth is, I want to share experiences. I remember the first time I showed my parents a virtual reality headset. They couldn't believe what they were seeing because they were so deeply immersed in that virtual world. And it's moments like that that inspire me to work. So it's not hard to see that after these kind of technologies develop a bit more, augmented and virtual reality can have a huge impact on our day-to-day -day lives. What's also pretty clear, though, just by looking at the available head-mounted displays like the one this guy's wearing, we're not quite there yet in terms of portability. In order for technologies like this to become truly ubiquitous, they can't make you look like a Call of Duty character. Now, we're still working on several solutions to that and other problems, such as form factor, ergonomics, transparency, field of view, and depth. And the most promising solution seems to be a light field display. Now, without getting into the technicalities of this light field stuff, essentially, the problem with it is that it comes with a loss of resolution and clarity. But what's interesting is that that very rich company that was shrouded in mystery that I mentioned earlier, Magic Leap, is supposedly working on something that they call a digital dynamic light field. In fact, their CEO will be presenting at the official TED conference in Vancouver tomorrow, hopefully unveiling their product. So we may soon find out. And of course, that's just all for head-mounted displays, which is just one kind of wear wearable. In the past year, we've made pretty steady progress. And while we still have room to improve, we have a pretty good idea of what needs to be done before gaining widespread consumer acceptance. Thankfully, we're at a point now where technology has gotten more advanced and cheaper for literally anyone to take advantage of, including people like us. And now is the opportunity for us to get involved with development. If you're interested, but you don't want to take a crack at something like that alone, skill building hackerspaces are popping up all over the world. Hackerspaces are like community centers where like-minded individuals, mainly tech-based, can meet, collaborate, and work on various projects together. Over 1,200 of these hackerspaces have popped up in the last year. And there, they'll happily teach you all the skills necessary to take on projects by yourself without any formal training. And of course, the good news for all of us is that whereas previously, these kind of technologies have only been available to the dedicated hackers, makers, and modders of the world, they're now understood well enough that they can be reasonably accessible to anyone. So. Regardless of your industry, expertise, or field of study, everyone has their own unique perspective to lend to a problem, and it could be yours that provides the key needed to create the next big thing. So chase your vision, chase your dream, and thank you for your time.